Hello everybody and welcome to another React tutorial for beginners. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can display data, specifically inventory items, and how we can add inventory items uh, to our kind of inventory management system. Now keep in mind that for now, everything we're doing is kind of temporary. As soon as you refresh the page, all of this stuff is going to disappear. But in future videos, I will show you how we can hook this up to a very simple backend so we can have actual persistent information. I'll show you how we can load that information and all that kind of stuff. Regardless, the first thing I want to do here is just clean this code up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is change this update data to be update filters. So we'll call the search parameters kind of the filters for our data. So this will be filters. This will be filters. This will be filters as well. And then instead of update data, this will be update filters. Now I'm going to remove all of these. I don't actually want to be displaying any of them right now. And uh, we can, why is use state giving us an error here? So, oh, it's because I forgot the uh, the other bracket. Okay, so filter, sub filters, use state, update filters, callback, update filters. Let's save, uh, let's refresh. Okay, everything seems to be working. Now I'm going to change the name of this callback too to say uh, update search uh, params like that. And then we're going to go into our other components of search bar and we're going to change from props.callback to props.update search params. All right, so now it's all working. The reason I did that is because we're actually going to have something else called data, which is going to store our inventory items. So in here, I'm going to say const and I'm going to say data and then this will be set data. And what this will be equal to is use state. And again, we'll make this a uh, hmm, actually, what should we make this? We'll make this a JavaScript object. All right. So, yeah, we'll have this be a uh, JavaScript object. And then what we'll do inside of here is we'll have a key and we'll just call this key maybe items and items will store a list for now. And then what we'll do is we'll add items to this list and then we'll display all of the items in the list and we'll see how that works in a minute. Regardless, though, what we need is we need some way to actually add items to this list. And so we're going to make another component now, which is just going to be a really simple input field uh, that is going to look pr pretty much exactly like this. It's going to have a name, price and uh, type and brand. And then we're going to use that to actually insert items into our inventory. And so let's actually just copy this search bar component. So let's copy this. Let's make a new file. Let's call this add item dot JS. Let's paste all of this in. Let's change a few names. So this is going to be add item instead of search bar. So add item, go down here and now export add item. And then what we're going to do is just change a few of these fields. So almost all of this will stay the same, except rather than having the max price, this is just going to say the price of the item. OK, so price, that's fine. Price field price. OK, I think that's all right. And then rather than having the search button pressed, we're going to change this from search to say uh, add item. And then we're going to change this to say add item button pressed. So we'll say add item like that. And then we'll change the name to be add item button pressed. And then here, rather than props.update search parameters, we're going to say props.add item. And all we'll do is just pass the item that we want to add. So in this case, this is exactly what we want. We want the name, the price, the type, and the brand. OK, so that is simple enough. Let's go ahead and save that. And now let's render this add item component and just see what this looks like. So actually, sorry, the title of this needs to change as well. Rather than search for an item, we'll say add an item. OK, and actually, is this add a item? I think that's probably the, uh, the correct way to put that. OK, so let's go back to app.js. Let's import this. So we're going to say from or sorry, not from. I'm typing in Python right now. We're going to say import add item from and then dot slash add item. OK, so now let's render this. So let's go here and say add item like that. And actually, I want to end the tag in a different way. So we'll just do it that way. OK, nice. Now we need to pass to this a callback function. That function is going to allow us to actually change the data here right? to add an item. So I'm going to say const add item to let's just say data. And then this will be equal to an arrow function. And then what we will do is we will say add item is equal to and then the function name, which is add item to data. We will take in here the item like that. And then what we're going to do in here is just add it into items. So since we're storing a list uh, inside of this state here, right? So for items, what we need to do is we need to first grab whatever is in the state. So we're going to say const uh, or actually not const. We're going to say let and current data equals data. 
And then what we're going to do is say data at the key items and then dot push. And we're going to push in the item. Then we're going to say set data and we're going to set this to be equal to the sorry, this says current data. So we'll say current data like that. OK, so hopefully this is kind of clear, but what we're doing is restoring the state in a variable called current data. Then we're going to push this item into current data. We're then going to say set data is equal to current data. And that's all we need to do. And in fact, to do this a little bit nicer, we're actually going to say current data is equal to data at items. We're going to change rather than current data. Uh, we're just going to make this equal to items. We're going to change this to just say items dot push and then we'll push the item in and then we will set data and then we will actually manually write in the items key and make this equal to items. OK, <laughs> I know that was a lot, uh, maybe a little bit confusing, but all we're doing is we're just taking the array that's here, storing it in a variable, adding an item to it and then resetting it in our data. This is kind of just the way you need to set uh, the state when you have a list in it. There's a few other ways to do it, but this is the way that I'm going to go with. Awesome. So now when we actually add something, it should add that item into the data. And what I want to do is I want to actually look at this data. So let's just console dot log the data after we call this function just so we can see what it looks like. So let's constant log data like that. All right, so we're going to go to inspect now and let's add some item in. So let's go name. Uh, we can just say this is going to be, I don't know, what's an item we might buy uh, cookies. OK, let's make the price to ninety nine. Uh, we can make the type uh, chocolate or actually we'll just say uh, maybe raisin. Do you guys like raisin cookies? Let me know. OK, brand. Um, hmm. do we need a brand for this? We can just say original. Okay. So add item. When I press that, it says items array. We can look at the items. We see we have name cookies. We have blah, blah, all the other stuff uh, associated with it. It's kind of cutting off. If I, if I move this over, maybe we can see it. Yes. Okay. Cookies, price, type, and brand. Nice. Now let's add another item. So we can just add that. And now we're going to see we have two items in the array. And now if we look at these, these are two identical items. Awesome. So we'll look at how to display those items in one second. But first, I want to make it so that we actually clear this add item kind of form here or field as soon as we call this callback function. So let's go ahead and do that. So after I add the item uh, and I do this here, I, I call this function, I want to clear the state. So what I'm going to do is say set name and we're just going to set it equal to an empty string. I'm going to say set price and we can just set this back to be zero. We're going to say set type make this an empty string and then we're going to say set brand and same thing an empty string. So now if I come back over here uh, and I press add item, you can see that it clears. There's now three items in the array and there you go. All is good. And if I press add item again, notice we have now another item and this one is just kind of empty, right? Because we didn't fill in all those values. Nice. So that is now working. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. Each question has a detailed video explanation and code walkthrough that is taught by a great instructor. I am actually an instructor on Algo Expert. A bunch of the questions on there are made by me. You can get started using Algo Expert today by clicking the link in the description and using the code Tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. All right, so now that we have some way to search for an item, or at least to get the search parameters and some way to add an item, I want to take all of the data that is in app.js here. And what I want to do is I actually want to uh, use it to display the information, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm actually going to build another component now that will kind of be our data display and we'll pass all of our data to it through a prop. So let's make a new component and let's call this data display dot JS. Uh, and actually, maybe we'll call this items display. Yeah, items display seems to work for me. So items display dot JS. Now inside of here, what I'm going to do is make my function. So if I say function and then items display, We'll take in some props and then we will return whatever we want to render. So in this case, we'll do a div like that. All right. So what I want to pass to items display, we need to export this. So let's say export default uh, and then this is items display like that. What I want to pass to this, so let's go to app.js, is our data, right? Or all of our items. So now in between the search bar and the add item, I will render my uh, items display. So we need to import that. I'm going to say import items display 
from and then items display like that. All right, so now let's use it. We'll say items display and then end the tag and we will say our items are equal to our data at items. Sweet. So now we are actually passing that through. Uh, it's saying cannot find items display. Did I spell this wrong or something? Items display dot JS. Let's just save that. Refresh. Can't resolve items display in React. Hmm. Okay. For some reason, that's not working. I don't know why that's not working. It should be importing it for us. Items display, items display. Ah, okay. So it's because I forgot the dot slash. So now if I save this, uh, you can see that everything is working. Sweet. So now what I want to do though, is I want to actually look at all of the items, right? So I'm passing them through items equals data items, but I need to render them in this component. So to render them in this component, I'm going to show you how we can render all of them at the same time using something known as map. So what I'm going to do inside of here is start writing some JavaScript code. I'm going to say prompts dot, and then this is going to be items dot map. And inside of here, I'm going to write a function. I'm going to write an arrow function. And what this function is going to return is a component that should be rendered for every single one of these items. So inside of the parameters here, I'm going to say item item will be equal to one of the items in the items list. And in case you're unfamiliar with map, what it does is it takes all of the items that are inside of a list and it maps them to a function. So a function runs for every single one of those items, and then you can return something from those functions. Uh, and what that return value is will actually be rendered to the screen. So to do this really simply right now, if I just make a P tag and I say name colon, and then I do this equal to actually, I don't do that. I can just say item dot name. Uh, this should be good. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might need to put this. Yes, I do. Okay. So I do need to put this inside of curly braces, but if I do this now, uh, you should actually see that if I start adding items, they show up. So let's try this. Let's go name cookies price 299. Say original brand none add item and actually nothing happened there. Okay, so let me go to inspect and see if we're getting an error. Uh, looks like we are printing something out but nothing's being rendered on the screen. So I realized why that was happening. I forgot to actually return anything from this function. So we do need to return something. And now if we return something, you can see name cookies is showing up. Okay, so my bad on that, guys. Make sure when you're using map and you define this function, which I've done here, you actually return a value. If you don't return a value, then obviously, well, nothing is going to show up. So now you can see we have name cookies and then we can show the rest of the stuff that we want as well. So let's just make a div. And inside of here, we'll just do a bunch of P tags that show all of the stuff. So let's copy that. Let's paste that a few times. Um, what's the problem here? Return div. I think that needs to be inside of a parenthesis. Hmm, for some reason, it's giving me an error. It says, uh, what is it saying here? Div has no corresponding closing tag. Oh, it's because that needs to be slash div. Okay, so now we're good. Now we have name, but I don't want to just display name. I want to display the price. So we'll say item dot, and then this will be price. And I want to display the type. So item dot type, and then the brand as well. So let's go brand, and then item dot brand. Nice. So now we have name, price, type, and brand. And then finally, I want to display kind of the ID of this item. And the ID of this item uh, for me is actually just going to be whatever its index is in the list. And so we can just put at the very top, we can say P slash P. And then actually to get the index in the list, I don't know if that's possible um, like this. So what we're going to do is add a field to our data when we add it in. So if you go here to app.js, Notice here what we're doing is we're pushing this item in. Before we push this item in, what I want to do is add a field to it that defines what the ID of this item is. And the ID of this item will be the order in which it was inserted. So whatever the index of it's going to be in the array. The way we can figure this out is we can say items dot and then ID is equal to and then this will be items dot. And I think it's is it length or is it size? I always forget uh, in JavaScript. I think you can use length and then that will be the ID of this item. Okay, so hopefully that's going to work. Uh, we will see in one second. So now here I'll say the ID is equal to and then item dot ID. And now what we're going to have to do is refresh and add a new item. So let's go name cookies. Let's go price 299. Let's go type. Uh, we can say, you know, vanilla or something brand, uh, you know, 
normal, whatever. Now, if I press add item, okay, the ID is empty for some reason. I don't know why the ID is empty. Uh, oh, it's because I'm saying items.id, not item.id. My bad on that. Let me refresh this. We're going to have to add a new item. So let's go cookies, price $2.99. We'll leave the others blank. Press add item. And then notice our ID is zero. So let's add another item. Let's just add, uh, I don't know, what do we want to add here? We can add some water. This can be $2.99. The brand can be Dasani. I think that's how you spell it, even though that's my least favorite type of water. And then type, we'll just say, I don't know, normal, whatever. And then add item. And now notice it has ID one. Okay, so that is how you display multiple items. Let me just quickly run through what we've done here. I know I kind of went through a lot and was skipping through some stuff, but I just wanted to get some code down on the page here. So let's go to items display. Inside of items display, we're taking one prop. That prop is items. And then what we do is we actually return or render using map a bunch of separate uh, kind of components here or divs that display this item. And so the way we did that is we said props at items .map. What this means now is run whatever function we put inside of this map here uh, and whatever it returns, we're going to show that on the screen. And so here we're running this function that takes the item. The item is one of the items from the items list. It grabs his ID, name, price, type, and brand, kind of nicely displays that, and then returns a div, and that div gets rendered onto the screen. And that's kind of how this works. Now, if you didn't want this to be so messy, you could take this function here and you could put it uh, inside of its own function, right? Like I could say const, and we can say, you know, show item is equal to, and then an item. And then this will be equal to an arrow function. And then here, what we can do is just have this return statement. And now uh, if I remove that parenthesis, this actually should work if I pass in show item like that. So now if I pass show item, uh, what I'm doing is just using the function that I defined here works the exact same way, except we just kind of move the function rather than being in line to a named function called show item. So let's try this. Let's just go cookies and just add it in and notice it still works the same way as it did before. Awesome. So that is how the items display works. Now, if we go to the search bar, we actually already looked at that, so we don't need to look at it again, but we can look at add item inside of add item. This is very similar to the search bar. All we're doing is when we press this button, we're calling the add item button pressed. We are then calling a callback function that was passed to us in the props from app.js. And then we're going to pass the name, price, type, and brand kind of the search parameters or the filters, if you want to call it that. And then what will happen is we will set the filters to be equal to whatever was passed to this callback function. So that will change the state here. And then we have add item to data. This is the callback function that we passed to our add item. And what happens is whenever we create an item here, so we press that add item button, it's going to pass all of the details of that item to this function. We are then going to get the list of items we already have from our state, so from data. We're then going to figure out what the ID of our next item is going to be. So whatever the length, length of this list is, is the ID of the next item. We'll then push the item in. We will then set the data to be equal to this new items array uh, that we've kind of modified here. And then we're console.logging it. And then, of course, we're rendering all of this stuff. All right, so that is a pretty good start for this application. In the next video, what I will do is show you kind of how we can style this. And then we will actually make it so we're filtering the items that are showing up based on the search in a different video. I was going to do that here, but the video is getting kind of long. Uh, so we'll kind of, you know, push that forward to another video in the future. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next React tutorial.